everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, this is day two. Uh, I'm here with Colt Solano. Hi, guys. I'm Alexander Vidal, and we are collaborating uh, using Adobe XD, Adobe Illustrator. That's right. Using the Adobe Suites, we're collaborating to work on an app. Uh, our app is a travel and outdoors themed app that was named yesterday Vamos. Yeah, I by, love that name. So good job, name. whoever. Yeah, we've already forgotten you, <laughs> but thank you. Yeah, thank you for the um, suggestion. Yeah, all right, good. We've already got some people in the chat. It's good to see some of you back. Hey yeah. there, Julia. Hey, hey Julia. Gal, Joe Dorgu. Good to see everybody. Maria's here. Yeah, so we had a great day yesterday. Um, we made a lot of progress on the app. We got started. Um, Colt really kicked it off with some wireframes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be looking over those again. Um, we've had a great morning. If you've already uh, been with us, we had the Photoshop Daily Challenge. Uh, we did some graphic design with Mercedes. She made some awesome posters that Amazing. we saw. Amazing, yeah. Really beautiful. If you didn't see that, you can always go to behance.net uh, slash live and check that out. Those were awesome. Uh, we also had another daily creative challenge. A little bit later, we are going to be looking at uh, yesterday's daily creative challenge when you were tasked to make uh, bubble tea makers. So we're going to check some of those out and see what you guys did. Uh, we do have a pretty exciting schedule today. We are going to continue working on our app. Uh, I'm going to do some more illustration. Sounds good. Uh, he's going to take some of the illustration into animation. We're going to see right. how that integrates in the app. So we're really going to get into the design today. Um, right, yeah. So yesterday, we just pretty much laid out the groundwork. And today, we're going to do some UI designing, animation, and some more illustrations from Alexander. Yeah, we'll see how it all comes together. Uh, we've also got a few other things on our schedule. In half an hour, we are going to have a contest. We're going to have a chat and win. So it's another opportunity to win 100 right. stickers from uh, Sticker, Sticker Mule. Mule. Yeah, 100 3 by 3 inch die cut stickers. So there's a lot you can do with that. So stick with us. That's in half an hour, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, all you need to do is be here and participate in the chat, and you have a chance of winning. Easy. Um, yeah, we had a winner yesterday who I think was going to make some stickers out of her, her daughter's drawings or her children's drawings. It sounded fun. So there's lots <laughs> of things like you can see do. That. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so let's start off by taking a look a little bit at what we did yesterday. Um, yeah, sounds good. Um, so we did, as we uh, mentioned, we did the wireframes yesterday, and I'm just going to walk you guys through the also the prototype that we did yesterday. Vamos. Vamos is the name. Let's see here. Preview this. So this is the loading screen. So this is uh, the loading screen when the user uh, opens the app. Um, after it loads, it gets to the profile page. This is where you uh, can set your current location and also set the mile radius. Um, if you're ready, let's go. And you land in the map. So from here, you can see your current destination where the blue circle is and also the destinations around you. Um, let's click on Crystal Cove. And this is the destination page. Um, from here, we're going to plug in Alexander's um, illustration. Um, if you click this cover, then you get to see all the, um, the activities. Here we played around with this yesterday where you could swipe. Um, but later in our session, um, we're also going to put illustrations here and also icons here where you could click an icon and this will automatically go to that specific activity. Um, yeah, so that's where we at. Um, also, if you want to pick a new destination, you just click here on the top. Awesome. If you want to set new location, just click here. Pretty simple, straightforward. Um, yeah, I think that's what makes it so strong, is that it's really easy to tell. Even if you were a new user, right. you could open the app up. Um, there's no confusion about what you need to do. It's really straightforward, which is, I mean, exactly what I think good UI UX should be. It makes Great. it very easy and welcoming. Yeah. Um, great. Cool. Um, do you want to recap our icons and illustrations? Sure, yeah. If we want to go check over to my screen, we can look at what we did yesterday. So, um, so yeah, we did a little bit of icon work yesterday. We started out with the mood board. Again, our mood board was just to kind of give us some ideas, start developing colors, um, thinking about a theme. Again, our theme is outdoors. Um, any of you in the comments, I would love to hear more outdoor suggestions. What are your favorite outdoor activities? What are your favorite places to go outdoors? Um, you know, if you're here in the US, what's your favorite national park? Or wherever you are in the world, what's your favorite wilderness area? Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear that from you. 
So we worked on a few icons together. Um, we did just kind of four simple icons. Uh, one for whale watching, one for sailing, one for fishing, and one for camping. Um, our focus was really just on doing something that was going to be easy to read, even at a small scale, something pretty simple. Uh, so going from there, we wanted to go into something a little bit more complex. Oh, we've got Valentina joining us again. Hi, hey, Valentina. Valentina. Crawl Flo is with us. Yeah, he's suggesting Florida Springs. All right, that sounds great. I actually have not... Have you ever been to Florida? Uh, yes, yeah, in um, Tampa. Oh, OK, yeah. yeah. I really want to get to Florida. I would love to go see like the Everglades. Yeah, there. yeah. yeah they'll be see, cool. Go see some manatees. Oh. Yeah, that'd be, be great. Cool. Yeah, so those are definitely on my list. Um, so I'd love to hear more suggestions where else we should go in the outdoors. But yeah, on the app, we created these icons, kind of simple, easy to read. So from there, we're going to go into some illustrations. So I've already got one going. Um, whale watching illustration. So I wanted to take just kind of the basic, very simple icon and add a little bit more complexity, just a little more interest. I love the textures now. Yeah, so starting to work with a little bit of texture, some slightly more complicated shapes, um, just to give it a little bit more personality. How did you do the uh, textures without a brush or? No, so actually, so there's a lot of different ways you can do texture in Illustrator. And I think definitely one of the things I love about Illustrator is you can find what works for you. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, what I like to do is I like to actually really make my textures by hand. So I actually have a couple over here, so you can see. These are some samples. Um, so I use different techniques to make, oh, nice. make textures on actual paper. So I'll use things like sponges or paint brushes. Um, and I create those you know, using just gouache or ink or paint. Uh, and it's really fun because I guess you just like, make a big mess and make lots of shapes. Yeah. Uh, and then I take those and scan them as bitmaps, and I scan them at a very high resolution. That's important. Yeah. Um, so I scan them at a high resolution so that when I'm working with them, um, they'll hold up at any size. That's awesome. So these are just a few samples. Um, I guess the biggest takeaway on doing it by hand first is you get those imperfections. Exactly, yeah. I know, think for me, I mean... It looks nice. There's something to be said. Like There is an aesthetic to, if you like, a more perfect um, texture, you could do it digitally, and that mm -hmm. looks great on some people's. For my work, I feel like I, I do like those imperfections. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, by doing it by hand, you get a little more variation. Right. Um, looks more natural. Too. Yeah, thank you. We've got some more suggestions from Valentina. She says uh, she's only been to two national parks. They're both beautif beautiful, Yosemite and Great Smoky Mountains. Wow. I've been to Yosemite. Those are Amazing. both. Um, I haven't been to the Great Smoky Mountains. I've been to Me Shenandoah, too. which is near there, and I'd really like to go. But that's that's interesting. Those are the two mm -hmm. you've been to. They're so they're on other sides of the country. I think um, Yosemite's in California and Great Smoky's in Tennessee. But that's that's right. awesome. Maria loves to rock climb. That's awesome. Joshua Tree. Yeah, that's a spot. Yeah, Joshua Tree is great. Yeah, really beautiful it's and really easy. Too. Have you ever camped out there? No, not not camp out, but it's fun. I did it camping was... once, and um, uh, after I had set up the camp at night, I saw a kit fox watching oh, nice. over our campsite. So that was kind of a cool encounter. That's amazing. Yeah. So these are some textures I made. Um, I have a huge folder where I just constantly am making new textures if I need for a specific project, and uh, there's some that I love that I use all the time. Um, so I'll be using some of those a little bit later in the illustration as well. And definitely, if you have any questions about um, what Colt did with the wireframes or what I'm doing about the with the illustration, uh, we'd love to hear from mm -hmm. you. Uh, Voodooval also says uh, they're getting strong urge to illustrate some icons too. Yeah, That's you definitely great. should. Um, yeah, I think give it a shot. And illustrating icons, one of the great things is. Um, it's just a good challenge because you have to think about something that's on a small scale that's going to read well. So there's a lot of fun in that. Cool, cool. Just a reminder, uh, we've only got a few more minutes before our chat and win, so stick with us. It's about 20 minutes away or so, mm -hmm. so definitely. Also, we're going to be working in tandem. So while he's illustrating, I'm going to start skinning our wireframes. Um, and then we could switch the camera back and forth. Yeah. Um, and we could always recap what you guys didn't see. That sounds great. Um, cool. Awesome. So I'll start doing some illustration. Um, I do trade off a lot between um, using the shape tool in Illustrator and using uh, the pen tool. So you'll see a little bit of switching there. So I did um, kind of a quick drawing uh, of our tent, taking the very simple icon, adding a little bit more complexity and a little bit more environments. Uh, I scanned that. And then I'm going to use transparency to multiply so I can see what I'm doing underneath. Yeah, we got a question from Norvell. How long do these icons normally take from sketch to final? That's a good question. I think, you know, for me, what tends to be the longest process is um, 
if I were doing this for a client, I would. These were kind of you know quick and easy icons uh, where I did one for each. If I were doing this for a client or if I were doing this for a larger project, I'd probably sketch out multiple versions. Um, I would try some variations. So I tend to find that's the longest part of the process. Um, but yeah, these were relatively fast. The shapes were simple. Um, yeah, so these were pretty quick. Julia, Julia is loving the designs already. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So when I do Illustrate, I do tend to like to work on a lot of layers. I think it just makes everything so much easier. So for example, I have a layer for the background. I have a layer for the ground here. Especially if I'm collaborating, it's going to make things so much easier. Uh, I also do a lot of different types of projects, and so having things on layers just makes everything easier later. Um, so getting, you know, early on, getting your projects and your files sorted makes things yeah, a lot easier. definitely. So we've got a little bit of, we've got the, uh, let's put the ground on its own layer. The background's on a layer, and I'll lock that so it's not constantly moving around as I'm trying to illustrate. Do you always start with uh, the backgrounds? Yeah, I mean, it tends to be just kind of the easiest way to go, especially, um, you know, I want to be thinking about value and contrast from mm -hmm. as soon as I start. Um, so that's really important to set the background color. And you can always adjust it later, make adjustments later, but at least have something to give you an idea of, um, you know, the colors yeah. and values you're working with. Even when illustrating traditionally, it's always hard to start with a blank canvas. Totally. You know, you need like some sort of texture or a colored background to get you started. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I'm just using yeah. a pen tool to make some shapes. Um, this is another area where if you wanted to, you could do something more geometric. You know, start with like a circle, use Pathfinder, get like a perfect half circle. That's one way to do it. Um, it's kind of a nice shape. Uh, but I like shapes that have a little bit of, um, a little bit more character to them. So I'm going to do something using the pen tool. Nice. Uh, Voodoo Val says, designing small is not only a great illustration exercise, but also a great challenge in problem solving, definitely. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> We've got some uh, ground going here with the tents. All right, I'm going to start uh, grabbing your files yeah. and uh, color sample some of your illustrations. Awesome. Let's see here. So I'm going to add like a little bit of a, a line for, um, what would you call that, like the bar in the tent or the... Uh, the supporting bar. Um, so for cool. that, I do want to use something with a little bit of texture, again, just to give it a personality. Um, it's kind of hard to see with the sketch, but I have a couple of br brushes that I like to use. Um, these, just like the uh, textures I showed earlier, are ones that I did um, using ink or paints and a brush, and then scan them, turn them into brushes. Um, so again, it has just a little bit more of a handheld feel to it. Um, I just want to get that to the right thickness so it shows up well. I think that's working. Symmetry, I'll just copy. You got some more people joining in. Awesome. Hi, Aurelia. Thanks for uh, joining us. Yeah. And if you are just joining us, we are working on our uh, collaboration here. Uh, I'm Alexander Vidal, I'm an illustrator. Here with Colt. Cold. Over here. <laughs> yeah, he's our UI UX designer, and we're collaborating on a travel and outdoor activity app. So we definitely like to hear from you um, what you like to do when you go outdoors, if you do. Uh, what are your favorite outdoor activities? What are your favorite outdoor spaces? Mm, that's all right. All right, let's see here. I'm actually going to be camping a little bit this weekend. I'm excited about that. Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to go to Big Basin uh, State Park here in California. Right on. So they have some redwoods out there. Um, Sweet. Yeah. There's also a, a species of bird. I don't think I'll see it, but they nest really high up in the redwoods. I Do you bird, really uh, bird watch as well? I'm, I'm pretty bird obsessed. Yeah. Uh, I nice. actually have a couple. I have a book about birds that's out now. Um, that I illustrated, and do you have one of those fancy binoculars? Uh, no, I have I have some pretty basic, some pretty basic binoculars, but oh, they cool. do a trick. Yeah, I should someday. I should get get a better set. So it's starting to come together. Maybe I'll do a little bit of the environment just so we have some more things fleshed out. And again, I'll put that on its own layer just so everything is 
easy to keep Looking track good of. already, All even right. with the sketch. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, so for that one, I wanted to start with the shape just so it kind of um, meets up with the corners, although we do have a little bit of overlap, just to make sure that there's nothing, you know, accidentally mm -hmm. um, hanging off. And then I'll use the pen tool to adjust from there. So we'd definitely love to get your, if, if you have any questions about um, illustration or design in general for either of us, we'd love to hear from you. Um, favorite outdoor activity is tanning and reading a book. Oh, that sounds great. In Scandinavia. I love that. Pretty relaxing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, outdoor activity doesn't have to be strenuous. It can be relaxing, totally. Or diving, that sounds great. That Do you mean diving great. underwater or skydiving? Yeah. Or cliff diving. Cliff diving. <laughs> if you're adventurous. Uh, Eliana said uh, she noticed some of your illustrations have more details than your initial sketches. Are most just rough outlines? Yeah, that's a very good question. I mean, yeah, this is definitely a super, super simple sketch for today. Um, and it varies by project. I, when I'm working with a client, I do want to send them a sketch that will give them a good sense of what the final is going to look oh, like. Oh, there you go. That's part of her question. Too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. And it's really important with clients. Um, so I do try to sketch most things, but I also like to have fun when I illustrate. And for me, part of that is making decisions when I'm actually doing the illustration. Um, so I do tend to change a lot from the initial sketch to the final illustration. I'll continue to sketch as I work. Um, if I realize I need something else in the illustration, I'll tend to like do an additional sketch and scan that in as I'm working. Um, yeah, so I think it, it varies. I do tend to like to um, keep the sketch a little simple just so that I can have a little bit more fun when I'm illustrating and really make a lot of decisions. But that's great. a great question. Oh, yeah, and Maria. So my first book was called uh, So Many Feet. It was a board book for children about uh, animal feet. It was really fun to work on. Part of the idea was um, animals have such different feet because they're adapted to so many different environments. So it was nice. kind of a fun book because it was very simple in its message, but it also talked about evolution and some more complex ideas. So yeah, good finds. Maria, that was my first book. Where can we uh, get this book? Um, well, uh, you could always check your local bookshop or uh, in on some online retailers, online. definitely so, have it. Yep. Check that one out. Yeah, and if you want to know anything more about me, um, you can find my website. Uh, it's alexandervidal.com, so that's where I have my projects. I do also have a Behance um, portfolio, and honestly, sometimes I update the Behance portfolio before I've updated my website, just because it's so fast to upload a project to Behance. So. True, yeah. And it's mobile-friendly, too. Yeah, which is nice, yeah. Which is really handy. So definitely the contrast there is not working. I think the colors, especially, there's a little bit of a clash. I'll have to tweak that a little bit. I'll probably go a little bit darker since it's in the foreground, um, just to give a little bit of contrast. Oh yeah, so we have a suggestion to go to, uh, I don't know if you say, Kidepo National Park in Uganda. That sounds amazing. Um, I used to live in Africa for a while, but I was in South Africa. But I did try to travel was around. That? It was amazing, and so the wildlife the was. Yeah, I was in Cape Town, um, yes. but I did, I did try to get around the country a bit. Um, so Kruger National Park in South Africa has some of the most incredible wildlife I've ever seen. Definitely crocodiles and hippos and elephants. And so that was awesome. Great stuff. Um, but we are lucky here in the US. We do have some pretty incredible wild spaces. I'd also love to hear from people around the world. What are your favorite national, yeah, like, definitely. in your country, what are your favorite parks or wilderness areas? You know, we've got people from Sweden. Let us know where you're from. Oh, thanks, Voodoo Valley. You found my Behance profile. Cool, so we've got a little bit more contrast here. It's starting to be a little Joss lighter. Van is asking, um, why is there a few pixel of empty space between brushes and the edge of the artwork? Is there? Oh. I'm not sure. Hmm, I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, we started to got to get this coming together. I will show a little bit of how I use some texture sometimes. So say for the ground here, it's a little plain. Um, first of all, I will darken it just because we want a little more contrast with the tent. Probably add a little bit of, change the hue a little bit. These need to get right now, I'm just having fun uh, kind of doing a quick logo mock-up for our app. Awesome. 
Let's also, see. just a reminder, we've got about 10 minutes before our chat and win, so that's an opportunity to win um, some Sticker Mule stickers. So definitely stick with us. Stay tuned. Oh, Ileana's got a suggestion. Uh, Kinabalu National Park in Malaysia. That's awesome. Uh, Ileana's from Malaysia. And um, is, that on, is that on Borneo, Ileana? So yeah, so I've got the texture. Um, I've copied the ground shape, and I'm just going to place it over um, and kind of put that in there. Cool. Coming along really fast. Pretty good. <laughs> nice. So it just adds a little bit of texture. Um, yeah, and you could use Looking the same great, texture man. again, or you could add in another texture. Yonkari Game Reserve. Hmm, where's that, Joe? Borneo. Oh, it is in Borneo. OK, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've only been to Borneo once. I did travel across pretty briefly, uh, but I did get to see some orangutans. That was awesome. <laughs> Those guys are really cool. It's back Seeing when I was... animals are the best. Yeah, definitely. So how many countries have you visited now? Um, like, sounds like you travel a I lot. Think, I think a little over 40. What? A little bit. I lived abroad That's for a long crazy. time. So I lived in both Africa and Asia. Um, yeah, That's I amazing. I haven't been to Europe in a long Good time, you. though. You're going to France soon, right? Right, yeah, in awesome. November. So we'll see how that one goes. Yeah, so if anyone has any uh, suggestions for visiting France, send them our way. That will be handy. Oh, I've got some awesome feedback. Thanks so much, guys. They say, nice website. Love the illustration. Super sweet. Uh, thanks, Valentina. The texture's looking good. Yeah, I think textures are fun. It's also just fun to... Um, Make the textures. I think it's nice, especially as you know, a digital illustrator, to occasionally take a break, work with some different materials, find ways to integrate them. Awesome. We've got some more national park suggestions from all over the world. That's great. Nick Hill is loving the textures. Nice. It's looking a little bright. So I'm just working on these illustrations a little bit. We've got a little over five minutes before our giveaway. So remember, stick with us for the chat and win, so you have an opportunity to win some stickers. Um, yeah, just adding a little bit of a border to that. Nice. Just to add a little back back lift. I love I love those subtle um, tones. You know, even if it's flat, it looks like there's depth in it. Yeah, thank That's you. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Add some little shapes down at the bottom just to get kind of the fold of the tents. Yeah, this is coming together pretty quickly. I okay. mean, we're only a few minutes in, and this is awesome. Taking shape. Nice. Yeah, let us know if you have any favorite camping sites. We'd love to hear that too. Or any uh, any exciting stories ever happened to you while you were camping? I'd love to hear those. Hopefully, no bear attacks. No, I was in. So I was. I had mentioned I was in Alaska recently, and I went to one campsite. And um, outside of the campsite, there were all these warnings that there was a mother black bear in the area that had been um, seen and was getting a little aggressive. I think she had cubs, and she wanted to feed her cubs, so she was sometimes going and looking for food. And so I was, um, I heard some sounds outside of my tent that night, and I was kind of like, okay, I mean, maybe it's the bear, but it was, Seriously? you know, there's, wow. in Alaska, there's grizzly bears, which are huge and pretty scary, and there's black bears, which are a lot smaller. Yeah. And so I knew it was a black bear, so I thought, well, maybe it could be the bear. So I kind of took my flashlight out and looked, and it was um, an Arctic hare. It was just like a, kind of like a rabbit. So oh, <laughs> I was both. I was both relieved and slightly disappointed. Honestly, <laughs> like I mean, seeing a black bear at my tent would have been awesome, but at the same time, yeah, it's probably, probably better than just a yeah. rabbit. We've got less than five minutes before our uh, giveaway, so stick with us for that. Uh, we've got a chat and win coming up in less than five minutes. We've got a chance to win some sticker mule stickers. Um, and actually, while we're on that subject, I do want to just share a few pieces um, from some. Illustrator friends of mine, uh, this is the very talented Larice Laura. 
Um, good. Yeah, she's awesome. Um, and so she's actually used a sticker mule really recently to make some stickers. Um, she made these incredible uh, travel icon stickers. Um, these are based around some locations in Los Angeles. It's really awesome. So you can see, you nice. can get the die cut stickers, so you can get them in all these different shapes. Yeah, the die cuts are good. She's got That's this really awesome. fun mix of like the geometry and then the slightly more um, angular, so you can do a lot with that. Um, I think she's even got them on some books here. So this is Larise Laura. Definitely check her out. Um, oh, we do have a story from Voodoo Val who says, uh, last time they went camping, they snow woke up to a fox sniffing her face. <laughs> that was a dog at first. <laughs> That's awesome. Though. I would love to see. I mean, foxes are so cute. They're so they seem super smart. Yeah. Um, so yeah, some more photos of those stickers. And then I've also yeah, got another designer friend I want to share, uh, Ellen Surrey, who has some awesome stickers. This is a really fun idea. Uh, Ellen loves, you know, antiquing and finding old like vintage items, um, and so she's got a real taste for vintage stuff. So she was inspired by those old. Um, those old like movie tickets or the old like carnival tickets to make this uh, kind of silly sticker. That's uh, awesome. Ticket. That's kind of a funny idea. She's done a few more recently as well. Um, these are some car ones. That's cute. Yeah, I love nice. how much personality. It's got these little like buck teeth. <laughs> it's another car sticker. So yeah, so there's a lot you can do. Um, the shapes, they come out super clean on yeah. Sticker Mule, so there's definitely a lot of opportunity there. Is it all inspired by uh, LA? Um, yeah, they both do a lot. Like I mean, like, these Randy's are definitely, donuts, yeah, yeah. Randy's Donuts is a big icon. This is the Tower Records mm -hmm. building. She's got one of um, uh, Ooh, Grauman's translator. The, uh, the mid-century brick. Yeah, those are beautiful. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, both uh, Ellen and Larissa have a real taste for mid-century. So lots you can do with those stickers. So just stick with us for about two and a half more minutes, and we're going to give away a great um, sticker giveaway. Yeah. So let us know, too, if you've ever used Sticker Mule, what you guys have made. Die-cut stickers have so much fun. It looks like uh, Joss shared some stickers. Love to see those. Nice. Uh, Joe Dorger says, not a camping story, but they did find a family of snakes in their kitchen cabinet. Oh, no. Not fun. I wonder, <laughs> all right, was it, was it a, um, like a friendly species of snake? I mean, like, there's some species of snake that are not, you know, not venomous and not... Um, too dangerous, so hopefully it was a, a good one. Um, oh, thank you, Voodoo Val, for sharing those links. That's for Larice Laura and oh, there it is. Uh, Ellen Surrey. So you can go see their Instagrams. You can see how they made stickers using Sticker Mule. Um, and you can also just check out their work. They've got awesome illustration work. Um, we did have a question earlier. I, I saw it went by earlier about how to um, improve, you, you know, how to get better at using detail and work. And it's really just, um, Illustrate more. So, you know, I think it just comes huh? with practice. Yeah, definitely. So, got about a minute and a half before our sticker cool, giveaway. Cool. So, I'll keep working on this illustration. It's starting to come together. Looking good. Yeah, I'm starting to design our uh, loading screen right now. Awesome. Yeah, it's going to be great to see how those come together. Uh, okay. Uh, the snake's not venomous friendly. Well, I guess, yeah, it's not necessarily the same, right? But um, I mean, if I, if, you know, if I had to, I would rather have, say, um, in California, we have, um, we have a species of constrictor, the rosy boa, and I think they're incredibly slow and docile. I'd rather have them in my kitchen than, <laughs> uh, say, some rattlesnakes, I think, especially. Yeah, rattlesnakes are yeah. scary. Even the sound that it makes. Right. Uh, I've got just about uh, 30 seconds before our chat and win countdown. So remember, all you have to do is stick with us, um, chat to us, and you have an opportunity mm -hmm. to win some Sticker Mule stickers. For, I think you get 100 die stickers. stickers. Could be a lot of fun. Voodoo Val says they only go to Sticker Mule for stickers. They rock. They do. They always come out really great quality, and they are often really fast. I've had some really fast turnaround from them, which is great. Yeah. Like what I, I was uh, talking about yesterday when I printed the uh, the surfboard stickers. Yeah. Um, I Oop. think it only Time for a chat and win. Two days. Yep. There you go. Let's do this. All right. So chats, and you have an opportunity to win some stickers. So join us in the chats. Um, you can tell us what you want to make stickers of. All right, we are 
back. So we will soon see who won 100 free stickers from Sticker Mule. Super Let's excited. see. Yeah, we've got lots of people participating in the chat. Could be go, any go, one go. of you. <laughs> Some people are just saying, wee, <laughs> <laughs> Camping. <laughs> like a, lots of good contributions. Yeah, diving. Valentina barely have stickers. Maybe Hope she will. wins. <laughs> stickers of whales, that'd be fun. <laughs> yeah, uh, that'd be cool. Yeah. 100 stickers. I think I will be stressed out where to put them. <laughs> yeah. I'll just stick it on anything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes if you know if you give it a hundred stickers, you can send them out to tons of people. You could send them to your friends, yeah. or you could send them to you know if you're working as a designer, you could send them to art directors. And we have a winner. Um, oh, there it is. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, I don't mispronounce this. Is either Tyus Torres. Tyus Torres. Tyus Torres. That sounds right. Awesome. Congratulations. Congratulations. You got a yeah. hundred free stickers coming to you. Enjoy your stickers. We'd love to hear what what are you going to do with your stickers. You know what design you're going to make. Um, but even if you didn't win, there is an opportunity. Uh, to get some stickers of your own, you can go to stickermule.com slash Adobe Live 19. Uh, and they've got a great deal where you can get 10 custom 3 by 3 inch stickers for only a dollar, which is awesome. Yeah. It'd be a great way if you have an idea you've been thinking about making a sticker of. Yeah. This would be a great chance to uh, get those made for only a dollar. Uh, yeah. So let's take a look quickly <laughs> at your screen. Yeah, see what oh, you've been working there on. There it is. So I made the uh, a quick logo, Vamos. Yeah. <laughs> So I added just the hat, you know, just to put more context about, you yeah. know, traveling. Um, and then we are now doing the loading screen. Um, I'm taking some of your ground texture Oh, here. awesome. Um, as you can see, uh, maybe I'll just repeat one more here. Um, so also yesterday, someone requested if we could see some animation for example, this loading and then turning into a full background. Yeah, sounds great. Um, let's do that real quickly. Do you do a lot of animation in your work? Um, not really, just for uh, presentation purposes. Yeah. Kind of like uh, what we're doing here right now. Nice. Um, but yeah, let's try that. So what am I going to do is I'm going to keep... Yeah, lots of congrats. Awesome. I like that idea. Christmas stickers of whales. That's interesting. Yeah. Would they be like whales celebrating Christmas or to give out at Christmas? And do you have a favorite kind of whale? I think they actually just discovered a new species of um, beaked whale. Beaked I think whale. Um, like off of Japan. Which is pretty incredible to think. I mean, you know, whales are pretty big. Even beaked whales are, you know, they're not as big as, say, like, um, as they're definitely not as big as like a blue whale or a humpback whale, but they're still pretty big, and so it's amazing to think um, that we still have these things out in the ocean to find. So it's really incredible. Uh, JC asks, "What's the font you're using for Vamos?" Yeah, it's, it's called um, Barricada Pro. Oh, cool. It's an Adobe font, so if you have a subscription, they're free. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, do you have any other favorite fonts? Um, Fun ones like this, um, and kind of what we use here. Gotham is my staple. Yeah, Gotham but, is a great one. Um, Proxima Nova is good too. Um, very readable. Gibson is one of them, and they're web safe, which is which is good. It's important. Yeah. Um, cool. So just a quick step here before we animate the loading part. Um, first is you want to start using the same artboard and deleting the things that you won't need. We do have an answer that they'd be stickers of different whales, but as Christmas presents. And I think that sounds oh, there you that go. sounds awesome. Um, yeah. And then maybe with Santa hats. All right, good. Well, you could do the Santa hat as a separate sticker, and then they could put the Santa hat on the whale. So, so I'm just going to rotate this. Um, and then one more screen. Uh, Ileana also has a question. She asks, Colt, when you're receiving files from illustrators, do you pre prefer receiving the AI files, or do you import them as um, PNGs or JPEGs? Uh, AI files, for sure. Yeah. Um, so we can keep the vector aspect of it. Um, once they're JPEG or PNG, you can't really animate it. Mm. Um, well, you can, but it's limited. You know, the steps are going to be limited. Yeah. So um, yeah, receiving AI files would be preferred. Um, SVG files would do as well. Mm. Um, Plus, I could always copy and paste from Illustrator to XD right. without any problems. Yeah. 
I think uh, as an illustrator, I think if you're in a relationship with someone where you're collaborating, where you feel comfortable doing that, that's great. And I do have, I have a lot of clients where they want the illustrator files and I like if they really need it, I'll give it to them. I do sometimes try to avoid it just because sometimes um, even good clients occasionally will like go into a file and um, try to tweak something and it's like, no, don't like. <laughs> So I prefer if I can send them like you know files that they cannot adjust as an illustrator. That's great. That's, Especially that's a good tip. I've had some larger projects where um, clients want to go in and like pull an element of an illustration and reuse it somewhere else. And usually when they do that, oh, it's no. a it's a disaster. I've had one project um, where they took an illustration of a bird and reused it somewhere else, but mm -hmm. they forgot the tail, so oh, the bird just looked like super <laughs> weird. That's not so, good. so yeah, giving giving. A, a client illustrator file sometimes makes me a little nervous. I wonder if that's part of why Ileana was working. I think um, we probably both had some instructors advise us not to send those. All right, I think we're ready to test this out. Awesome. Let's see here, let me just link this back to here. So we got our loading screen here. So it animates. Sweet. And then it exploded. Fine. Um, what we can also do is also use the time. So instead of clicking from this to tra transition to this page, um, what I can do is go to your panel um, and time it. Sweet. And then we're going to have maybe 0.2 delay. Let's do 0.4. And let's try, try that again. I think that's going to be better. Load, and then expand. So this is going to be our, um, this is where we can set the location, the current location, and the mile radius. So from our wireframe, it's going to be this page. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, we do have a question. Uh, do we, are we using Adobe libraries for sharing files? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, it makes things super easy. Uh, it's also a great way to keep track of everything. Exactly. Um, and then in the future, if we get to work together, he's Super based easy. from LA. I'm in San Diego, so that's really handy if you guys are not, you know, in one place working together. Yeah, that's definitely one of the most amazing things about um, working as a designer. Now it's just so easy to collaborate with people on the other side of the world or the other side of the country. Um, you know, in the past that would have been so difficult, and now with technology, it's so easy. Definitely. Okay, let's keep jamming here. Yeah. Just gonna take this. So, let's see. Uh, if we want to, we could go back to my screen while you're working okay. a little bit. Um, so yeah, this illustration's How's starting to come coming? together. Take away the sketch so we can see. I think there's still some contrast that should be worked out. The background is maybe a little light now, now that I'm seeing that. Um, and just so you know, like that, I'm leaving the top area sort of blank on both because they're gonna have some text, so I don't want too much. Um, too much conflict there, so I tried to design those, leaving those in mind, leaving that space in mind. Um, so just giving a little bit of personality to the trees. Um, yeah, we'd love to hear your questions too. If you have any questions about illustration or design in general, feel free to hit us up. Um, you could also check out our uh, Behance portfolios. I think we've had the Definitely. links uh, mentioned before, but you can see what we've been up to in the past. Um, yeah. I do need to update. I think I've got a few few recent projects I should update on Behance sometime soon. It looks like you're painting. You have your palette of textures, and you're just <laughs> you're right. going back and forth and messing around, taking right. them. Yeah. Thank you, Nick Hill. Said uh, he loved your transition. Oh, awesome. So yeah, there's a lot of ways you could do um, animations in XD, um, but again. It doesn't have to be that way every single time. Um, you know, it depends on the client that you're working on. Um, the really the you know the goal for animation is just really show the transition. Um, but during wireframe phase, um, that's not mainly the case. You know, for wireframing, it's always been you have to just you know show where the content falls and making sure that they arrive, the content hierarchy is correct. Um, 
not including any animations yet. But when you hit the design, yeah, the animation will really come in handy. Awesome. Yeah, so adding just texture. adding a little bit of more shapes, just add a little bit more personality. I'm going to darken these just so they add a little bit more depth. Nice. So this is starting to come together. I think I'll continue to darken this a little bit. I think a little more contrast would be kind of nice. I mean, yeah. I can continue to darken the back tree. It just adds a little bit more depth that way. Oh, so let's see. Maria asked, do you have a favorite source you go to for design inspiration? So um, you talked a little bit, you like to use um, Behance for that, right? Right, yeah. So I always go to Behance, and um, there's another one, Design Inspiration. Um, but those two, I always bounce back and forth. Um, in Behance, it's just pretty easy to filter what you're looking for. Um, That's great, yeah, that know, makes it a lot easier. Browse through all the categories, you know, videos, websites, UI, UX, illustrations, even photography animations as well um, and then you could sort by most appreciated um, by week or all time yeah that's awesome so we have a question also do you use the iPad for illustrating uh, I do a little bit that's a uh, question yeah. I'm uh, I'm not great some people are amazing on the iPad for illustration I need to spend some more time practicing um, I should definitely try there's some fun tools on there um, usually if I do it it's like when I'm traveling and uh, you know if I'm on a plane for a long time um, I'll try playing around with some drawing, uh, but yeah, I mean, some people are, are doing incredible work on the iPad, definitely. Um, yeah, I want to explore that either. Yeah. it will be cool. Yeah, how about you guys? We'd love to hear from you. Do you use um, the iPad for illustrating? That would also be fun. I mean, I do a lot of travel, a lot of travel-themed illustration. I should get better at it so I can kind of do those things together. It'd be nice to be out. Um, you know, exploring and being illust and illustrating at the same time. Usually now it's like I'll I'll take a sketchbook and I'll do some sketching and I'll take lots of photos and then there you go. Wait until I get home and, and really work on that illustration. Yeah, maybe I'll that's a good maybe I'll practice this this weekend. I'll be camping. I'm also going to go to um, Pinnacles, pretty close to San Francisco, and do a little camping there. Hopefully, I'll see a condor. I think they they Ooh, like to nest around huge. there. Huge. So if you are just joining us, um, we are working on a collaboration here. Uh, just to remind you again, I'm Alexander Vidal. I'm here with Colt Solano. Um, I'm an illustrator. He's a UI UX designer. And we're working on a travel app we came up with. It's called Vamos. Vamos. Yeah, it's a great name. Somebody suggested for us yesterday. Um, and it's a travel and outdoor activity themed app. So I'm working on some illustrations for uh, the screens. Yesterday I worked on these icons. Um, that are pretty small. Oh, we've got a message from Julia who has to go. But thank you so much for joining us, Julia. Thank you, Julia. Yeah. It's been fun. Definitely, yeah. You can always check out the stream tomorrow. If you go to um, behance.net slash live, you can see what we were up to tomorrow and today. So it's a great suggestion to check that out at any time. Great. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for joining us. And we'd love to hear from the rest of you as well. So we are working on an outdoor activity-themed app. Doing two illustrations, one uh, around whale watching, one around camping. Oops, and I accidentally moved part of my tent. That looks crazy. <laughs> um, but we would love to hear from you what your favorite outdoor activities are. Uh, when do we have a question on wireframing? It would oh. be for you. Where is it? Oh, but for wireframing and brainstorming, I, pref I prefer pen and paper rather than using digital equipment, let you say. Oh, definitely, yeah. If I'm working um, by myself, I could actually just go with that. Um, the only reason why I have to put it digitally is for presentation. You know, if you are present, presenting that to a client, it might be awkward if you just show the mm. sketches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but also, but to me, if I all, if before even before starting um, doing them in XD, I always sketch as well. You know, it helps me visualize things and the flow, um, and then I just kind of make it a little bit presentable using Illustrator or Adobe XD for wireframings. But yeah, awesome. it's a good start, always sketch. Yeah, we love to hear about your process too, how you guys like to work. Um, I usually start pencil and paper too. I think for me, um, that's just the easiest way. Yeah. Yeah. So 
we've got a comment. Uh, it's turning out great. Love the images. Really make you feel cozy and advise you to get out of the house. That's really sweet. I'm so glad to hear that. I mean, that's definitely for me. Um, you know, as an illustrator, I really want to find ways to use my illustration to encourage people to get outdoors. That's part of why I love to illustrate wildlife. I want to inspire people to engage with the world around them. Uh, we have another question. Which kind of portfolio do you support for a beginner UI UX designer hoping to get his first job? Uh, dribble shots or made of case studies on Behance? Uh, case studies would be nice, uh, definitely, um, because what you get out of it is, you know, the process and how you think from scratch to the finish, uh, finished product. You know, um, also when you're posting that in Behance, if you're building a case study, um, start with, you know, the final uh, outcome, the final project, and then down to the process. And it's basically telling a story because you know most of the time, employers doesn't really know what's going on, and you're always not around and mm. to explain the project. So always tell a story how you came up with um, the final product. Um, you know, include your sketches, include the process, and yeah, it, it will be really handy. And if you have work that you've done for an actual client, always start with that first. Um, if you don't have that much, always, you know, just to try to come up with one. You know, do your own case study. Um, it could be like a makeup product or whatever. Um, but yeah, always uh, tell a story when you're building a portfolio that, that will come a long way. Yeah, that's a great point. I think especially, um, you know, for jobs like UI UX, a lot of what you're getting hired for is your way of thinking. Exactly. Um, yeah. As much as you know how good the final thing looks, it's mm -hmm. about um, all like your ways of thought process. Right. Of the how way you, you to show those. Is, yeah. How you problem solve and you know practice your um, UX designing. Um, so yeah. That's awesome. What do you think would be a good um, like if somebody wanted to start out? What could be a good project to make for themselves? Um, it could start with a bubble tea app. Yeah, that was our <laughs> challenge. Um, yeah, start with you know participating challenge uh, to challenges like that. Um, it practices your you know your skills <laughs> of thinking. You know how fast you can come up with an idea and how fast you can um, execute it. Yeah, that's a great point. And on that note, uh, we will check is. out. We should check out. Uh, yesterday, we had a challenge to look at, uh, to make a bubble tea maker. So some people participated. This is uh, the Behance challenges. So you can see those on behance.net slash challenge slash XD. Uh, yesterday, it was to make a bubble tea app. Um, talked a little bit about bubble tea. Yeah. Let's see this. So let's check this one out. So this is one from, who's this from? Uh, Sankar, let's see. Sankar. Oops, there we go. Cute. So actually, let me go back. I think we might have missed something with that. Yep, so you select one of the flavors. We've got three flavors. Fills it, some really fun animation. And you choose your add on. <laughs> the boba pearls. Super cute. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I love his little face at the end. <laughs> That's really sweet. It's got a lot of personality. That's a lot of animation. That's awesome. Oh, and that's a really fun idea, having the bubbles that's great. off. Yeah, really fun use of animation using XD. That's awesome. I think yeah, got... that's a lot of animation coming out from uh, Adobe XD. Yeah. We've got one oh. more from oh, Jack. One more. It's got a nice setup here. It did a nice design. I like that you used, um, came up with like a, a logo for that. Right, really so this smart. is a good example of a case study, you know. Uh, you could also start with an introduction like this. You know, always explaining what the app is about. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, really nice use mm -hmm. of explanation. You made a little logo for it. it. Feels really professional. It looks nice. Yeah, this is a good setup to show a few different screens. Yeah, awesome. Good job, Jack. And I think we do have. There's a video, I think. Yeah. Let's see. Nice. Oh, wait, is this actually? Oh, it is actually interactive. All right. Perfect. That's awesome. OK. Look at that. Very cool. <laughs> All right. And then I guess my, choose my base. Oh, All right. Fancy. Very cool. So let's say we want oh. milk tea. 
Uh, I'm probably just not figuring it out right, but it was awesome, very cool. I think there is also a video, maybe I'll go to that. Yeah, that one. Oh, there we go, wait, it's not. There we go, all right, let's see how it goes. It's looking great, Jack. Select the size. Oh, we've got Jack here, awesome. I'm so glad you could Medium. be here for this. This is looking Ace. so fun. Oh, you can rotate it. That's awesome. Wow, that's impressive. Nice, I like the grass, grass jelly, jelly for extra authenticity. Tapioca. Very cool. Not that one. You can go back. That's awesome. Really cool. Yeah, yeah I love fun. all the thought that went into that, Jack. That's really smart. And I really especially love the way you presented. Showing it on the phone is really smart. Right. That's really good. It looks great. Yeah, amazing. Sweet. It works, uh, it ties in everything, you know, the text, the logo, the color palette. As a unit, it looks like a, a solid brand. Yeah, and I'm happy nice. to see the, the grass jelly. I, I did mention I'm not crazy about boba, but sometimes grass jelly can actually be pretty fun, yeah. especially uh, in hot weather. Yeah, oh, nice. I just love the texture of the, uh, the tapioca. Yeah. yeah, it's like chewy and yeah. Cool. <laughs> How's this going? Good, it's starting to come together, I think. Nice. Yeah. So I'm just adding a little bit more shape just to add a little more character, especially for the larger illustration. I think for the icons, the focus is really on keeping it simple. Um, this is still sort of a simpler one. Yeah, and thank you for submitting, Jack. It was really awesome. Yeah. Great stuff. Cool, so this illustration is starting to come together. Right on. Uh, we'd still love to hear from you guys what your favorite uh, wilderness areas are, your favorite outdoor activities. I was working on an outdoor activity themed app. Uh, Voodoo Val says, uh, favorite thing to add to tea is the lychee jelly. Oh, nice. Nice yeah. touch. Yeah, it was a fun idea for an activity because one of the most uh, fun things about boba tea is just how customizable it is when you can add you know, a different base, different type of tea, different, uh, different type of filling. I don't know if filling's the right word, but. Archie Jelly, nice. Hey, Eric, you're from Taiwan. What part of Taiwan are you from? I used to live in um, Shinzu, just south of Taipei. I used to go to the, the drink stands a lot. I would not get the bubble tea. But uh, in the summer, I would get usually, there's like a kumquat green tea, which is great. Especially in Taiwan, it gets incredibly hot and steamy all summer. So um, those bubble tea, or those drink tea shops were, were amazing. How long have you lived in Taiwan? Mm, I lived there about a year and a half. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Did you kind of learn their language? No, I, <laughs> I knew. I knew some like words for food, so I could like go and like you know. That's handy. That's uh, that's the I most important thing to yeah. me always. Um, uh, speaking of nature, though, Taiwan is one of the most beautiful places. It's incredibly beautiful, amazing. You know, I think Taiwan is more famous in a way for its um, cities, since it has so many big cities. And Taipei is such a um, an incredible city. But the nature in Taiwan. Oh, you're from Tainan. Nice. Um, the nature is. Amazing. Um, inside, like the interior of the country is just filled with these incredibly beautiful mountains. Um, so you can go hiking, um, there's hot springs, and oh, it's a really big destination for biking. Like a lot of um, people do big bike trips there, so right very on. cool. And Tainan is famous for its food. Uh, it's got some great traditional food there. That's awesome. Great stuff. Yeah, so we'd love to hear from you where you're from and uh, what you like to do uh, in the outdoors around you. And just to remind you, um, we've got a little more than 30 minutes before we're going to have a portfolio submission. So we're going to review some portfolios, which I'm super excited about to see what you guys yeah. are working on. Um, yeah, so I think this illustration is starting to uh, wrap Looking up. Good, yeah. yeah. Still a little simple since it's for a mobile app, so we don't want it to be too complex, but it's got a little bit more personality now than the, the more simple icon. You can still see how they relate. Uh, we've got a suggestion from Voodoo Bell. Don't forget to check out the Portfolio Review tab. Yeah, awesome. Sounds good. How about you, Eric? Do you have a favorite place in, in Taiwan to go? Um, so many incredible places. Oh, and also, um, 
What is the, there's a really famous natural site on the East Coast that I cannot think of the name now, but it's really incredible. It's this gorge that's amazing. Taroko, Taroko Gorge is really incredible. It's probably one of the most famous natural sites in Taiwan. Um, it's kind of, I mean, I wouldn't call it their Grand Canyon because it's so different, yeah. but it's, it's a beautiful natural gorge that's just um, really amazing. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a great country, really. So we'd love to hear from you guys what you like to do outdoors. Um, awesome. We've got some people checking out each other's portfolios. I love that. That's great. Yeah. Seeing what you guys are working on, sharing your work. Get some feedback. That's super awesome. Yeah, so the starting to come together. Cool, um, cool. Yeah. Do you have anything you want to share yet? Or uh, are you sure. still working? Cool. Um, also still working, but um, I could start plugging in some of your uh, illustrations. Awesome. Um, so a little bit earlier, just a quick recap. We did this animation loading part. Um, as you can see. Load. Oh, nice. There it's you coming go. together. Um, I'm thinking for this background, I might use that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, the trees. OK, so cool. Do you want me like to? Just... I can set up a simple one with just the trees. Oh, there, the, there you yeah, go, while just you're, for the background. While you're working yeah, on perfect. Um, cool, cool, cool. See? Collaboration happening right on the yeah. spot. That's, uh, and right now I'm going to do the map. I'm going to take some of your illustrations. Um, Let me go to our library here. Ooh, we're splitting to the split screen, so you can see we're both working on. Nice. OK, this is ready. Awesome. Do we change places, too? Right? <laughs> no. no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like we did. <laughs> I know what you mean. It is confusing because our screens are <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. on the other side. <laughs> it's always been like this, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going crazy. No, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, Eric also says, National Palace Museum in Taipei is very impressive. And it is. It has probably the most incredible collection of Chinese artwork in the world. Um, nice. Really amazing stuff. You can see um, incredible watercolors and scrolls and... Um, so Norris asks, how are you juggling between the two screens? Um, well, so we are each working on our own screen, but we are saving we're to swiping. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're saving to the um, the Creative I, Cloud library. Exactly, we've got a folder we're sharing there, so mm -hmm. um, makes sharing really easy. Yeah, so this is kind of what we were talking about earlier. Um, so this background, um, Alexander created this uh, earlier uh, yesterday, um, and now they are from Adobe Illustrator. And what I can do is I could just grab whatever I need, select them, and copy. And then I go back to my XD, which is here, and paste. There it is. Awesome. So I could just group this and maybe shrink them to fit the size. Perfect. Cool. We've got another suggestion. The National Museum of Marine Biology and Aquarium. Oh, I unfortunately never got there. Is that in, uh, where in Taiwan is that? That sounds awesome. This. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Yeah, we love the question. So definitely, if you have any questions about illustration, design, and it doesn't have to be just about what you're seeing today. Uh, if you want to ask more general questions about working as an illustrator or as a UI UX designer, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, and just a reminder, we've got just about 30 minutes before we're going to be reviewing a portfolio. Awesome. Let's see here. All right. Uh, so we do have a question from Fernanda. Can you edit the vectors in XD? Yes. So this is a vector from Adobe Illustrator. Yeah. And, and as you can to, see, if you want to I can edit the coast. it right here. Yeah. Oh, nice. Make the land shorter, but I'm not going to do that to Alexander's illustration. <laughs> That's why I said don't share your, your vectors with. Design. Yeah, and I could also change the color. Oh, awesome. Like that. That's so great. it works similar to Adobe Illustrator. Um, and it keeps the uh, file size light oh, okay. versus working on a PNG and, and you know heavy, flat images. Uh, Ileana has a very sweet question. She asks uh, if I'm working on any books they should be looking out for in the future. Um, I am. I'm trying to think of what I can 
what projects I can talk about. Um, I have a couple of books that have not yet been announced, so I can't talk about those. But I have my own book that um, has been announced. Uh, it's coming from Chronicle Books. Uh, and related to today, it's called Wilds of America. It's a nonfiction book about the wildlife of the United States. Uh, I'm super excited to be working on that. Nice. It's the first book I'm illustrating and writing. Um, but you would have to wait a while. It's not coming out until 2021. So Looking I'm still, forward to that. I'm still in the process of writing it, and then I have to illustrate it, and then it'll eventually come out. But thanks for that question, Ileana. Yeah, my wife and I always love to... Uh, giving books as a gift to our nephews and nieces. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's been, that's been one of my favorite things about illustrating books is seeing, um, you know, lots of people share on Instagram. Like, they'll share when they order a book, they share their kid with the book, and it's really yeah. sweet to see. Um, one of the books somebody mentioned earlier I did uh, is an animal book called So Many Feet. It's about different animals and how they use their feet, like, um, <laughs> like lizards that run uh, or awesome. polar bears that use their feet. They have big feet to walk on the snow. Uh, and one fun thing I saw is people were giving it as a gift for baby showers, and they would give it with a pair of animal socks. I thought that was really cute. It was like a very smart, That's awesome. smart idea. Animal socks. <coughs> animal socks, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, so books are the best gifts. I agree, I love books. Um, so we have a question. How to get better and better in designing the UI UX logos? Um, yeah. Yeah, just stuff. I mean, in the early stages, I think, you know, it does take a lot of practice. And sometimes mm -hmm. um, I think it, it's probably easy to feel discouraged at first because your dot designs don't necessarily look as good as professionals right away. Um, I mean, part of it is just, you know, keep working, keep right. looking, finding work you like, and see what, what makes it so good. Like, think about what makes it so good. What other advice do you... Just keep practicing, really. Um, and in terms of UI, UX, always start with a simple idea. Um, I know online there's a lot of inspirations and complex animations, and um, start with something simple, um, mm -hmm. similar to kind of what we're doing here, you know, um, starting with four or five steps and then practice that, making sure the basic uh, functionalities are straightforward, simple enough to understand, um, and then you go from there, you yeah. know, and um, a great just question. keep doing it as much as you can, and you'll just, you'll be great in no time. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so often with design, um, a lot of it is just, um, it's, it's just about putting in the time and really working and um, and not being discouraged because honestly most people when they start out um, you know your work doesn't look great right away and that's just part of the process um, and certainly it can be discouraging but um, you know if you stick with it and just keep trying yeah. you know I've seen so many people improve so much just through work yeah so definitely let us know if you have any questions about design illustration um, we'd also continue to love to hear from you about your favorite um, wilderness areas, your favorite outdoor activities. It's been fun getting so many of those from around the world, people suggesting their favorite national parks in all these different places. That's really awesome. Also, one trick that um, Damien showed me uh, yesterday, um, instead of duplicating something like this, um, like the pens individually, you can do... Uh, master component, uh, a component. Nice. Uh, for example, this, I'm going to turn this to a component. And I can repeat this. But if I edit this one, it affects everything. Um, if I want these two right here, the instances, to be still kind of independent, um, what I can do is also do an instance here. And for example, um, so now they're all kind of independent. Nice. So I could edit this on its own without affecting three. Um, but if I change this to master component to something, um, for example, awesome. That. Oh, like, is this an instance? Oh, that's a good question. How many years of experience did it take for you to have been able to say, finally, I'm good at design? Okay. 
Uh, I'm sure <laughs> it'll happen any day now. now. I don't know. No, I mean, it's, it's a tough thing where you, I think, you know, we're always hardest on ourselves. So, you know, it's easy to see somebody else's work and, um, and just think, oh, that's so amazing. Um, but, you know, I mean, I think it takes a while. Yeah. But at the same time, you, you recognize that you could always be better and there's always room to be better. And that's part of what is fun as a designer is just recognizing that, um, you know, your whole life you're going to get to continue growing and challenging yourself and, um, yeah. <laughs> that, that's maybe kind of a weird answer, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to say, like, oh, I'm good now. Or... Oh, that's awesome. Eric says, uh, last year they didn't feel good enough to become a UX designer, UI UX designer, but this year he got featured by XD. That's awesome. Yeah, congratulations. Awesome. There you go. Yeah, that is nice. There's so many different ways to, um, you know, to, like, you can use Behance to show off your work, to engage with other designers. Cool. So I'm just doing a little bit of a um, very simple screen, taking some of these elements Perfect. and reworking them with a little bit of a, a trail theme, um, just so we can have kind of a, uh, a unique opening screen. I think the ground is looking a little too level, so I'm going to... Adjust that. Yeah, so I'm just taking some elements of the illustration. So usually, if I were um, actually going to do this, I would, I would start out on pen pencil and paper and work on um, the illustration, and work on the design first. But I'm kind of doing this one on the fly just so we can see how this looks in collaboration. Varying the ground a little bit just to add a little bit more character. Yeah, awesome. We're getting some more feedback. Maria says, it just takes practice and persistence. That's awesome. I agree. Yeah, totally. There's no trick, just practice. Yeah, and I mean, definitely check out the uh, challenges um, they have here on Behance. You can go to behance.net slash challenge. They've got all sorts of different challenges. Um, and participating on those is a great way to build up some skills, get some feedback. Uh, speaking of feedback, just to remind you, in 20 minutes, we are going to be doing a portfolio review. I'm super excited about that. I'm going to look at some of your portfolios, yeah. see what you guys are working on. Yeah, so I'm just doing kind of a simple um, background here. I thought the idea of a trail leading into the screen could be a good way to, to start this off, just to kind of theme into the idea of getting outdoors. Yeah, and Voodoo Val says we're usually very hypercritical of our own work because we see every step. Uh, we know every uncertainty, plus we have the original hope and inspiration in our heads, and that's totally true. Um, I think it's so easy to look at somebody else's work in just yeah. the end product, and you just think, oh, that's amazing. But um, yeah, I mean, exactly. They went through so much to get there, and they probably have a totally different idea, and they probably have their own disappointments that you can't even see. Um, and so what you do see is the finish, and you just think that's amazing. Um, yeah, very good point. Nice. Starting to come together those kind of weird shapes because I'm going to add a little texture just to. Um, yeah, I like to play sometimes with um, adding texture within a shape just so it has sort of like some place it's hard to find and some places it's a little bit softer. Yeah. Oh, we also have a question. Do you participate in some other challenges like Inktober? Um, I've never committed to it. Inktober. Yeah, but I'm really considering. Yeah, Inktober, if for those of you who don't know, is a great um, challenge some people do where they spend the whole month of October um, doing a different drawing every day. Every day. Yeah. yeah, some people are purists about it and they only use black ink. Um, some people just take it as an opportunity to force themselves to do drawing and they'll use other forms of media. Um, but I think that's great. That can be a really good challenge. Um, and one fun way to do it is to set a theme at the start of the month. Um, because one of the biggest things if you're doing a challenge like that, it can be hard to come up with ideas. But if you give yourself um, a theme at the start of the month, like maybe you're going to illustrate, yeah. um, you know, since it's October, do a different like ghost or monster every day. And then um, that could be a way just to encourage yourself to work. Um, and that's, that's a great way to grow as an illustrator. Totally. Yeah, we're getting some great encouragement. I love that in the comments. People encouraging each other, definitely. That's awesome. 
Yeah, sometimes you just have to go for it. Worst thing is someone yeah. doesn't like the design, um, but in every case you practice and become a little bit better. And that's also a good point. I think it can be really hard if you're starting out and you start to get some feedback. Right. And maybe somebody doesn't like your design um, and you can take that very personally. But um, honestly, it's just part of the process. Not, not everybody's gonna like what you do, definitely. Um, and I think, you know, that's okay. I have some, uh, I had an instructor at Art Center who still posts his, um, he has a couple of books and he'll post bad reviews from the books, um, like on social media. And, and part of it is he's just having fun with it. He, he recognizes, um, he's very, he's incredibly talented. He's very successful. Uh, but he posts those just to kind of show. And I think it also helps his students to see that even if you're a working professional doing incredible work, mm -hmm. you know, he'll post these reviews that are like, uh, my child could have done it better. And it's like, okay, <laughs> no, it's not true. And it's just like, it's I think messy. it's, yeah, people are, people are, right. always have feedback. And yeah, I think especially with the internet now, so many people feel they can give right. just um, really mean feedback, even if it's not true. And just, mm -hmm. so yeah, so don't take feedback too personally. And it's true. Even if somebody doesn't like your work, right? So what? You know? Even in real world, when you're uh, working with a client, yeah. it's always unpredictable if they're gonna like it or not. Yeah, totally. So um, I guess the more you are exposed to it, the more you're gonna develop this kind of callous. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah, develop um, a thicker skin. Exactly. Um, so you'll get used to it. I, I mean, it's part of the job, really. Especially when you're a designer, you're dealing with clients and they don't always like your design right off the bat. Totally, yeah. Um, yeah. It's part of the job, yeah. the way I look at it. Yeah, and I mean like, you know, on one hand you should not take it too seriously. On another hand, sometimes, I mean, without getting too deeply invested in the feedback, it can also be an opportunity to look at your work and think, okay, um, are they right? Is there any area where I could improve? And maybe there is, um, and maybe there isn't. So maybe it's just, so, yeah. Awesome. So this is starting to come a little bit together. Good, we have the both. Yes, yeah, yeah, screen screens. So we're both here. working on the true collaboration happening here today. Um, yeah, and I can doing this guy a little bit, a little bit quicker than I normally would, just so we can get this guy. Yeah. Over to you. I'm Punch sticking up. with the font as well for now. Yeah. So we'll just jam through all this. Yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys also how you pick your favorite fonts. How do you choose what to work with? Um, you know, I think it's such an important thing uh, to try to really match the personality of the typeface or fonts to uh, mm -hmm. the project you're working with. You know, obviously you want it to be um, clear and legible depending on what project you're doing, but you also want it to have personality that fits. Um, yep. So yeah, Gotham is one we've been talking about. That's a, a favorite of mine as well. Um, oh, thank you, Nikhil. That's so sweet. Uh, you guys are awesome. Yeah, you too. Thanks. Keep working. We love getting these questions, definitely. And it's awesome to see people starting out. Um, and if you're already here and you're already watching these, then you've got a great start. Um, this, you know, Behance is a great environment to to link up with other designers, see what people are working on, um, engage in some different types of projects. So that's awesome. Okay. Yeah, Joe Dorgu has a good point. Listen and examine, but don't internalize criticism. That's very well put, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you can listen and you can see maybe there is something right. Um, but yeah, you don't have to internalize it, exactly. Perfect. Yeah, that's a, that's a great advice. All right. Yep, only... 16 minutes until portfolio, portfolio review. review. So check out the portfolio review tab for more details, definitely. Uh, I'm really looking forward to looking at those today and seeing what you guys are working on. It's all taking shape. Nice, I'm excited. All right. Yeah, so I'm doing just kind of a quick illustration today so we can get this onto the screen, see how this looks together. Uh, so I just did this kind of a trail. Um, I'm gonna give, so nice. right now the lines of the trail are a little clean. Um, I'm actually gonna give it 
a little bit of texture on the edge by using a brush. This is a brush that I made. I forget how I made this one. Sometimes I'll just like draw lines with um, kind of a, a soft pencil so it has some texture and then scan that. Sometimes I'll draw lines with markers or brushes that scan those Interesting. Um, and then turn them into brushes. So, um, so I put the brush on. I'm going to expand. Although actually I see I should first do this. So I'm going to expand so that it becomes a shape and no longer a brush and then make it all the same color. So you can see now the edge is not totally perfect. Oh, it's nice, got just yeah. a little bit of texture. That looks a lot better. Yeah, yeah exactly. So it doesn't feel totally perfect. Um, maybe I'll do the same thing for this. This is the ground, so we want the ground to feel mm -hmm. a little bit more organic. So I'm going to do the same. Oops, I accidentally put a brush on that. So I'm going to go back here. It's fun to watch this. It's like Use building Legos. You just keep <laughs> building and building. <laughs> Expand again, make it the same color. Um, oh, there it is. Yep. Nice. And then, let's see, did I lock Look at that mountain. Nice. Let's see. Sweet, we're coming together. Thank you, Justin. You said it's a little late to the game, but dig into progress. But once again, if you're just joining in, we're just doing a, uh, a travel app called Vamos. Um, which is English is let's go or come on. Let's go. Let's go. There you go. Perfect. Um, yeah, so Alexander here is demoing some illustra illustrations using Adobe Illustrator. And I'm turning that into a mobile app using Adobe XD, awesome. which is short for experience design. Um, yeah. Yeah, and our app is outdoor and activity themed. So um, we're also talking a little bit about some of our favorite outdoor activities. Um, I really think as a designer, we do need to remind ourselves to get outside sometimes, uh, explore the world a little bit. There's a lot of awesome stuff out there. And that can be a great way to recharge. So on that topic, um, uh, if you're in the comments here today, I would love to hear from you what your favorite way to recharge. And it can be you know, outdoor themed, or it can just be something else. Like maybe you like to read, um, maybe you like to go try a new restaurant, something like that. Uh, yeah. yeah. But also, I would love to hear more about you know your favorite national parks and favorite wilderness areas. Awesome. Yeah, that's coming together. I like the colors. Now it's starting to get some cool. color in there. That's yeah. really cool. So I'm going to start uh, plugging in the icons now. Awesome. So that's going to be fun. So once again, I'm going to our shared library. Um, Let's check it out. Is it this guy? For um, the icons? Yeah. 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 I think. Oh. Mm, oh, yeah. there it is. Sweet. Cool. Um, so those this. are some of the icons we designed yesterday. Yeah. Whale watching, sailing, fishing, and camping. So I'm just going to do all at once. Oh, you know what? I think I already have it. I think I did this earlier. Oh, there it is. Awesome. Got this in there. Oh, that's a good idea. A daily five minute plank challenge is a great way to force <laughs> myself to get off of that chair. That's a very good idea. Yeah, get a little, um, that's an easy workout you can do anywhere. Um, that's a great idea. Just take you a, a little break um, and do a plank. Absolutely. Especially if you are a designer and an illustrator, it's so easy to spend all day sitting. Um, and a plank, you know, is great for core. Um, so uh, just doing something <laughs> to protect your body a little bit, uh, because yeah, if you're if you're sitting all day, and especially if you're um, you know hunched over a computer at all, it could be good to remind yourself to um, stretch a little bit. Oh, this is looking great. So you're placing the icons. Yeah. So what what are the two we're doing? Camping and whale watching, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna line this up real quick. Awesome. And shrink them a little bit. Oh, and thank you. Uh, I like the colors. That's sweet. Yeah. So yeah, those um, are awesome. Oops. Try to go for a slightly vintage color theme, so something that's a little bit muted, using lots of greens and blues and some browns. And what's uh, a good feels uh, natural. background color for all this? Hmm, I mean, I, yeah, I like the cream. Really? I just, okay. Yeah, I mean, or, yeah. Well, I like the cream because it's so visible. Like, the, there's a good contrast. Okay. And the cream, it feels a little bit like um, slightly yellow paper. So even though we're looking at an app, it feels mm -hmm. a little bit like looking at... Um, Oh, it looks nicer in here. Yeah. Versus in my screen. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
I think it looks great. Okay, that works out. Nice. It's, it's like looking at like a, a vintage guidebook or a vintage field yeah. guide or something with that like a, a, yeah, a parchment exactly. color or something. It's nice. Uh, Coral asks, what do you recommend for a uh, designer who's are sitting all day? Well, plank, uh, as was suggested, could be a good way to, to go about that. I think also just reminding yourself to pull your shoulders back. Yeah. I, I think just did that. you know in <laughs> yoga. I think they're constantly talking about pulling your shoulders back mm-hmm. and really opening up your chest. Get one of those stand up desks. Yeah, but Maria also though. just suggested uh, an adjustable oh, or standing desk. Yeah, thanks, Maria. That is true. Yeah. Um, have you ever used one? Uh, no, not really. I've I've been in some like studio environments where they have them, and it's nice when I uh, like if I have if I have to um, answer emails or something like that. I. It can be great at a standing desk. I, for me, illustrating at a standing desk is hard. Some people can definitely do it. Um, oh, we have a suggestion that the icons might not be aligned. Are they? It's probably just the, uh, maybe. Oh, good eye. Good catch. Boop. There awesome. it is. <laughs> We've got some. Perfect. That's awesome. We've got some great, uh, very attentive yeah. viewers. That's awesome. Love it. Cool. Yeah, it's starting to come together. I love how this is looking. Right. What are we going to add here? Oh, uh, good point. Uh, I could Cove. do, so Crystal Cove. This uh, is Crystal Cove, right? Yeah, so do we have, are we going to, where are we going to use the trail illustration? It's, I'm thinking here. OK, cool. Uh, I'll do a quick, I'll do a quick ocean okay. illustration. Let me, OK. I can access that file too, right? Yeah, so that's right. saved under yeah. illustration screens. Illustration sure. screens. Yeah, make sure. You're getting the latest. Yep. Yes. There's that one with the trail. Perfect. What are the dimensions on the other? I'll do a new file. Um, let's do. This is live collaboration happening right in front of you, and we have a portfolio review in just eight minutes. So, um, super excited to check that out. Remember to check out the portfolio tab to see those. Let's do 307, 307. 307 so that's a square. Awesome. Oh, I did not need that many artboards. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna grab this. Awesome. Yeah, we could do the split screen again if we want to see yeah. the collaboration happening the live. There we go. Yeah, so I'm just gonna do a simple illustration to show um, the ocean. We still are getting some great suggestions. Um, Agnes says, I do, they got a foldable rowing machine. That's awesome. Five minutes every now and then, and it works miracles. Um, working from home, that is a really smart idea. The rowing machine is great. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, I think as designers, it's really hard to. We're often very hunched, um, and you do need to focus on getting your shoulders back. Rowing machine is great because you have to really work those muscles, um, get your shoulders back. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's a great suggestion, Agnes. Um, that's also nice. Uh, you know, working from home—that's a smart idea to have something like that at home, so you can, um, you know, use it as a break. Um, that's really smart. Yeah, I think especially you know if you're working. Um, on a project and you start to feel a little, um, you're feeling a lack of motivation, right. you know, it can be easy to like, you know, go watch TV or something, but if you use that time to go take a run or something, if that's, you know, if, if that's um, something you're able to do, uh, it can be great. Or, you know, just finding inspiration, maybe listen to some music. Um, there you go. Definitely. I'll do maybe, maybe I'll pull inspiration from, maybe I'll use the sailboat icon. Use that as a starting point for our Crystal Cove illustration. I'm gonna do another screen here. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, Agnes says that the rowing machine is great for cleaning the mind, definitely. Oh, yeah. Nice. I think especially, you know, so many designers I know um, and illustrators were often very much in our heads so it can be great to do something like that that kind of um, yeah. occupies your mind in a different way. You're so focused on you know, the form of your body and the repetitions um, that you you let go of a lot of the other stuff from your head, and it can really actually help um, your process. Yeah. So we've got two screens going. We've got a lot of collaboration happening. Uh, we'd love to hear from you guys what other ways you have of clearing your mind while you're working. Um, this is an outdoor activity themed app, so we would love to hear more about your favorite outdoor activities. Um, but it can be anything. Test this out. OK, good. Awesome. Yeah, how's that going? Uh, good. Um, so right now, I just created another slide. Um, so everything will come in after 
this page. There it is. Nice. And I'm going to do your illustrations. Copy and paste this again. Back to XD. Paste that. Yep, sorry, I'm in the prototype mode. Go back to design. We've got some more good ideas. Um, Joe Dorgu uh, reads a book or goes to sleep. Uh, that's also a good way to do it. I like um, the latter option. <laughs> work for an organization but lucky to work from home 90% of the time. That's awesome. Um, Rally says swimming is best because uh, for stress control because you have to concentrate on your breathing. It's really calming. That's true. I think one thing they say when you want to calm yourself down is you should focus on um, regulating your Thank breath you. where you breathe in and breathe out for the same amount of time, and swimming kind of forces you to do that, so that's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, Tori says uh, they take a quarter mile walk to the gym on lunch break every day. Um, that's awesome, and yeah, that's a great idea to do it halfway through the day um, to help break up your day. Really smart. Definitely. Uh, and Akil asked, uh, did you guys, how did you create the color swatch? Uh, did you reference any design online, or is it complete? Uh, do, is it just an idea we came up with? Uh, well, basically, it came from our mood boards, right? Yeah. Uh, so we, did you color sample? Uh, yeah, from? so I just pulled, I'll show that again. So yeah. I there it is. started here and just kind of pulled some colors. Um, and then really, it just continued to develop as I was working. So I used these as a start. And then um, you know, once I actually got into the details of working, I saw where we needed more contrast in colors. Um, so a mood board like that, though, can be a great source of inspiration because sometimes um, it's easy to waste a lot of time when you, you, know, you need to think of a color and it can be so easy to get lost in the details there. So sometimes just yeah. finding a way to get some colors to get you started is a great, uh, a great way to start out. Yeah, good question. Uh, Voodoo Val says, let's see, their watch reminds them to stand every hour, do breathing exercises, uh, and 30 minute workout every day. That's every yeah. hour, so we gotta stand. <laughs> That's a great idea of how to use technology to uh, force you or yeah. you know encourage you. I That's think great. I'm gonna lose my head if I stand though. There it <laughs> <Yeah>. is. <laughs> <laughs> Our headless designer. Um, awesome. Yeah, we've got some other suggestions for meditation. There's some meditation apps, definitely. So your illustration looks nice in the background, right here. Oh yeah, that's looking so great. Good. So it just adds a little bit more yeah. depth. Cool. Yep. So that's some live collaboration you guys are seeing finally paying off. And then I'm just going to use the Vamos as our call to action. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. I like that. Um, especially for an active themed app to have that kind of, the, the name itself is so active. That's great. Yeah. Uh, we've got only less than two minutes until our portfolio right. review. I'm super excited to see those. Um, yeah, that's looking good. You've got the colors going. And I will save this as... Saving this in our Adobe Creative Cloud folder so that we can both access it. I'll continue to work on it. It's very cool. simple at present, but I think I'll pull some of the shapes for whale watching since we've got not too much time. Uh, thanks. Tori says it's looking great. Yeah, the app is looking awesome. I think it's looking great. really good. It's coming along. Yeah, it's really fun when you start to see these things pay off when um, you know the illustration and the design start to really get together. The quick trick in UI designing is all about the content. Yeah. Basically, UI designing is just the framework. If you don't have great content, it's pretty much useless. <laughs> so, I love working with illustrators like uh, Alexander over here. So, yeah. Lots of exciting stuff going on. Yeah, it's definitely the fun thing about collaboration. Um, yeah, Eric loves collaboration as well. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think what's great about collaboration is you know you use your skills and the skills of somebody else to create something bigger and better than you could create on your own. Um, that's really awesome. Nikhil says the login page looks awesome. I agree. I think it's looking really great. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm so glad you guys could all join us for this. It's been so much fun. Oh, and we're just about time all for right. our portfolio submission deadline. So we'll check out what you guys have been working on. Yeah, super excited to see that. All right, we'll be right back. Yeah. 
Hey. All right, we are back. <laughs> we uh, blasted off to space because that's where you review portfolios. Am I sounding <laughs> older? Uh, I think you sound great. Yeah, I think that we should have been wearing those all day. I think those are yeah, those are awesome. So yeah, Dude, so you can even do this. Now we are going to check out some of your portfolios. I think oh yeah, that looks great. I think it looks good. <laughs> We've got two portfolios here I'm super excited to see. Our first one is Eric, who has been such a great uh, guest with us today. I'm so excited to see your work. Nice. This is awesome. It's hot in there. Yeah. Very cool. This is looking great. So let's Eric's take a look at some of these projects. Let me know if you see one you want to start with. This is looking awesome together. Let's uh, look at beautiful. the latest one right here. Uh, which one? The ice. Ice. Awesome. Very cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, so this is, yeah, this is a great intro. Like right off the bat, you, totally. I'm already hooked. You know, I'm intrigued and I'm intrigued to scroll down. Wow, this is beautiful, yeah. Yeah, so like all at once, you know, you're showcasing the look and feel, the typesetting, the color palette, um, even without reading. I mean, I kind of get the idea already and the flow. It's got a great vibe. And I love the, exactly. the contrast you're doing here between um, I mean, you've got such a great use of like the dark and the dark photos, and then here you get to this sudden moment of um, bright and white that's just so... Great stuff. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Yeah, really awesome. Yeah, this is straight up professional right here. Super awesome, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is so cool, yeah. Yeah. I love the subtle background and the loose grid layout. Um, you know, not everything is super structured. Um, I got a lot going on here, which is really nice. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I could definitely continue to look at that, but I want to see what else you've got going on. There's All some right, really cool things. See so this one, Elk Mountain. Oh, cool. All right. Same template. Nice. Yeah. Love it. Really beautiful. Uh, the photo, the use of the photo to show totally. as a background for your um, logo is awesome. Yeah, you can nice. kind of see the inspiration from the logo right off the bat. Yeah, very which cool. Is nice. Very clearly laid out. Awesome. And this is the process that we are talking about earlier, you know. Just yeah. showcasing every process that you did for this case study is a yeah. good way to start it. Oh, and let's see, Eric has done a lot of these projects in collaboration with other Adobe Live regulars. That's awesome. Yeah. Really cool. That's looking great. Yeah. Yeah, I love how professional it feels, and especially, I mean, showing it here um, on the Mac itself really puts it in context, which is really smart. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it definitely looks incredible. Yeah. Sweet. It's amazing, yeah. Even the uh, the image choices are spot on. Nice. Take Great look. stuff. Grab one more. Damien Lillard, awesome. that player. Let me give it a, uh, we've got some examples Damian of logos. logos. I love to look at logos. Very cool. Oh, that's clever. <laughs> I love it. The cat tail. Elk Mountain, that one is beautiful. Awesome. Yeah, you're showing some catalog. variety here. I like that you've got um, like different types of like. Yeah. Logos and logo types. I love the negative spaces too. Yeah, really smart design. Yeah, you've got a great Kena, variety here too. Yeah. The lettering is awesome. Awesome. This guy. Amazing. Very cool. Menswear, cool. July 4th, look at that. Yeah, this is really cool that you're showing such an incredible yeah. variety of types of logos. That's really important. Awesome, yeah, another good one. Sweet. Yeah, this guy's well-rounded from UI designing to branding, identity, everything. Great portfolio. So yeah, yeah. people want to check this out on their own. This is Eric Sue. His work is awesome. You definitely should. It looks great. Uh, and Eric's been really good uh, joining us here in the chat today. So awesome. Where is he from? From Utah. Like from Utah. Yeah. But originally from Taiwan. Is that right? I think. Nice. All right. Awesome. So we've got somebody from Brazil here. Very cool. And I love immediately seeing such a different personality. That's super awesome. I mean, that's one of my favorite things about design is um, just seeing, oh, cool. Yeah. Starting off with the mood. Nice. Lifestyle image. Nice. So this is a designer from Brazil. Oh, super fun. I love the personality of this. Yeah. I like that you show it to, um, yeah. you're showing us in pencil to show us how you kind of sketch it out to get to the, the final vector. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Different logo treatment. Oh, you cool. Just the age and that's really cool. The different characters. Nice. And showing how it works in different languages. That is actually pretty smart to see. Um, to show how it would be in different kinds of characters. That's really cool. To see how the logo could expand right. internationally. Yeah. And nice. Love nice showing you the design. context. That's super smart. 
And again, as a unit, it looks like, you know, a solid brand. Yeah, very cool. Let's take a look at some more. Ooh, Lettering. See that. Oh, sweet, yeah. Coffee. Really nice and fluid design. Oh, cool, okay. so we've got some coffee themed. Text, that's a, that's a fun, fun font. Yeah. Frappe. Cool. Frappe, is that Frappe. coffee? Yeah. Nice, so they're all coffee okay. themed lettering. Super fun. Nice. Ooh, I like that one. I love how they have their own personality. Yeah, each one feels so distinct, but they right. all feel really strong. Oh, nice, yeah. I love seeing that, too. Definitely. That's cool. Seeing it in context. That's awesome. Um, very cool. Let's take a look. Yeah, great stuff. Sweet. Oh, I love packaging, so that's always one of my favorite things to look at. Arte and burger. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I love the way you take design this pattern. I think that's super fun, especially showing the intersections between illustration and design right. and branding. Super awesome. All right, Eric, uh, to answer from Taiwan, from moved to Utah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, uh, right on. Nice. This is great. I oh, love the combination. Oh, that's where the uh, inspiration came from. Very cool. Smart. Very cool. Yeah, nice. I like the way it's laid great out, stuff. so we can see all of the individual yeah. pieces, the colors. There you go, typography, typesetting. This is great. Oh, the yeah, I love The pattern is fun. I love the way you use the pattern here to kind of remind us of that, bring us back into that fun. Mm -hmm. Awesome, yeah, yeah, really smart. And the way you've extended the logo throughout the brand. Right, different materials. Very cool. Yeah, showing this, I mean, this is so such a professional uh, right, way yeah. to show it. Absolutely. That's it's awesome. just really showcasing how flexible the brand is. Oh, awesome. I love that. Uh, yeah, I that. love looking at packaging work. It's so fun. Yeah, it's really nicely mocked up. It looks great. Yeah, I feel like if, if you have that pattern and the logo, it could be in any other color. I think it will it will work. Yeah, that's really awesome. Yeah, yeah, showing might, it with yeah. the food. Yeah, this is really cool. Yeah, that's a great project to show off your skills. And this looks, oh yeah, that's awesome that you've extended it. You've shown so many um, different facets of this project. Yeah. yeah, so you've got, um, I mean, you like the logo and the branding. We extend that to the packaging and then even showing how it exists in the world as advertising. That's really awesome, yeah. I think that's such an important thing set. for projects like this is really putting it in context, like sometimes you know, showing it on a screen or yeah. showing it here, um, how it would look out in the world. That makes a big difference, definitely. Yeah, really awesome. Let's look at one more, some more lettering. I love that stuff. I love the shadows in between oh, nice. the letters. Yeah, nice. that's really beautiful. It's got a really interesting effect, like sort of electric mm -hmm. blue and then this um, the bit of dark shadowing. That's sweet. cool. Yeah. I love great. that lettering, like one uh, one weight. Yeah. All throughout. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's like such a brush fun lettering right here. Nice. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, the inter. I love that. That's really beautiful. The interplay here. Yeah. Um, that's really that's a really neat effect. Man, the yeah. nudes. <laughs> nice. Send nudes. Is that? Uh, I guess it means nudes? send nudes in um in oh. Portuguese. That's awesome. That's really ah, cool. nice. But the uh, the play here is so fun. Yeah, definitely. That's a really fun effect. Oh, nice. Everything. Yeah, you've got some great lettering skills, too. Sweet. Medicina. Nice. Awesome. These are both great portfolios. Yeah. yeah. Well, awesome. Thanks great so much for stuff. joining us for these portfolio reviews, and thanks so much for submitting. These are both yeah. really great. Uh, it's gr awesome to see what you guys are working on. Um, so many talented people on Behance, and you guys are both both really awesome. Um, so thanks for submitting those. Um, that's good. Sounds Great like we've stuff. got some collaboration coming together. So we've got a few more minutes, so we'll continue working on All this. Right. Um, oh yeah, so we've got some illustration going in. Cool. Let's um, shrink this a little bit. Cool, cool. Yeah, those are both really great portfolios. So um, let me just show this trick real quickly. Um, so I know we, I know I demoed this uh, yesterday. Um, so if you, they are, uh, they came from a component. So if I move this, it affects everything. So nice. what if I have a third line here, um, and that's gonna affect, you know, and I want more space. So it's gonna affect all the instances, and you don't want these spaces. So what you can do is um, create a component. Let's see here. 
just do this real quickly. So let's say you can create this as a component. And then you can use the same um, step here, which is the grid, but not including the master component, just the in instances. So from here, you could go repeat grid. You could do something like this. Now, if I move this up, oh, this guy, it's independent. Nice. So it doesn't matter if I have two lines here or three lines. Now it doesn't affect the rest. So that's a, that's a quick tip from Damien. So thank you. <laughs> that's really handy for um, making the text box flexible without affecting the master template, I mean, component. And that's what we're going to practice here. Yeah, this app is really coming together now that you can see. Um, you know, it's been great seeing it go from yesterday, you developing the wireframes, um, to now seeing it's starting to use uh, yeah. the typeface and the logo you designed, um, starting to have some color, starting to use these illustrations. Mm, I'm excited on this one. Or camping. Hey, camping. Awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to do. I'm going to do some camping this weekend. Uh, that's we've been talking a little bit about some ways to. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry, Eric. I mean, you were looking for ways to make your portfolio pieces better, but your portfolio was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, I think you know anyone who's watching. <laughs> if you have any feedback for Eric, uh, you could definitely take it. But truthfully, everything I saw was so beautiful. I was really impressed. Right. Maybe um, what you could also add on on your. Um, case study for UI designing as you could also maybe include like an animated GIF on how things move or animate. Um, but other than that, Super. they're all amazing. Yeah, really strong. You order. probably should be the one like <laughs> criticizing us right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for sharing your work. Yeah. You're very inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean I think, you know, I mean obviously your work is incredible, but it's always brave to to share your work and put yeah. it out there. So definitely uh, thanks for sharing your portfolios with us. So because of time, we're only going to do whale watching and camping. Um, but I'm just going to do additional. I'm just going to repeat this two right here. Cool. Yeah, I agree with Voodoo Val. Uh, the best critique is just to believe in yourself, because your work is awesome, definitely. Um, yeah, and just keep creating work. Those are really incredible. Whale watching. I spelling this correctly. Yep. Two thing. All right. Camping. This is centered. <laughs> yeah, so it's fun to see the. Um, uh, I love. Uh, I always love seeing illustration and type play together and how they work together, and it's already looking fun. I think um, just a little bit of type over an illustration can add so much uh, texture, and it's really fun to see. Yeah. Yeah, so we're working on, uh, just as a reminder, uh, Vamos. That's our outdoor activity-themed app. Uh, so we chose a location in Southern California, in Orange County, as our starting point. And so this is a screen where you could see some different activities you could do in that spot. Um, it's starting to come together. Yeah, you ready to theme. animate this real quickly? Let's see here. Yeah. Uh, and I'm working currently on another small illustration for our Crystal Cove. Uh, we want an illustration that's going to go at the um, intro to that, so I'm working on just a very quick, uh, very simple one to do today. Um, so we can have that uh, on the screen as well. Um, so yeah, you're seeing a live, live collaboration happening between us right now. Yeah, awesome. Oops. It's going to be really fun to see how it all comes together at the very end. 
Uh, and just a reminder, so I am Alexander Vidal. I'm an illustrator. I'm here with Colt Solano, UI, UX designer. We're both on Behance, so feel free to check out our portfolios. Uh, follow us. We'd love to hear from you. Um, you can also find us both on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So we're working on uh, our latest projects, although um, try to keep Behance updated when I can. Me too. This is always tricky to find your time, you know, right, especially right. if you're working on your own project. Yeah, totally. Let's see here. Auto animate. Yeah. Got our destination oh, activity save. too. All right, easing in and out. Cool. Yeah. Um, so I've got that one saved as Crystal Cove in the. Folder. All right. Um, auto animate. Same thing. Cool. If you have any questions about anything, any of the processes you're seeing today happening, um, so I'm working in Illustrator. Uh, Colt is working in XD. Uh, we're using those together. So if you have any questions about any specific processes or just larger mm -hmm. questions about design, we'd definitely love to hear those. Um, so quick tip here for linking. So I just linked three of the icons here. Uh, instead of linking all this again, all I could do is I could delete this and copy and paste all the icons with links. But as long as you are in the prototype, it will copy the links with it. Copy. Paste. Very well. You can actually paste it on all artboards at the same time. But we need some cleaning to do and relink this guy to the first one. Um, right? This is. I can see it. Hey, I love hearing all the conversations going on in the comments. Um, we've got Maria reaching out to Eric, just wanting to hear more about. Um, his design processes, uh, definitely, yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, I love that you guys are making these connections in the chat. Yeah, definitely. It's really cool. Um, you know, Behance is definitely a community, so it's great to see you guys using it like that. All right, let's see here. OK, let's test this out. Awesome. Fish. Oh, no, this is camping. Right. Yeah. Well, we well, only worked on two well, screens well. today just yeah. for our shorter schedule. But. <laughs> I got to rearrange this, but this is kind of how it works. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a great um, So you could use that to. It's not camping. Oh, you could go from here to camping. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. Perfect. Well, watching. Yeah, that's right. Um, we're almost done. Yeah. That's looking really cool. So yeah. I did save um, Crystal Co. So if you want to put that in. All right. Um, I've got one more very simple illustration I did just now to put that in. Where is it? It should be saved as Crystal Cove. In Crystal there. Cove. Yeah, awesome. Uh, and thanks, Eliana. Eliana says, everything looks great. Yeah, thank you. It's so cool to see it all come together like yeah. this. Definitely. Cool illustrations. Thank you. It's uh, uh, great to get all this perfect. feedback. Oh, awesome. All right. Let me just link this up real quickly, and then we're all set. We could do a final demo. That goes there. Um, that yeah, we are nearing the end of our time, so I think we're perfect just to see how it's all coming mm -hmm. together. We'd still love to hear from you guys. Uh, what are your favorite outdoor activities, your favorite places to go outdoors? Um, how do you pull inspiration from the outdoors when you're designing? Um, I tend to take tons and tons of photos when I'm uh, you know, camping or traveling outside. Uh, it's great to use those later for reference, for, for colors, for texture, um, anything like that. OK, let's try this. All right. Justin says, love this collab. Yeah, I agree. I think we've worked. This is actually our first time working together, and it's been great. All right, so let's see this. Let's see it. Get to the loading screen. It loads. Whoop. Awesome. Then you get to your profile. Very cool. From here, you can set your current location, set your mile radius, and vamos. Now you get to the uh, destination. This is where your current location is, and you could choose from all three, but we're just going to do the Crystal Cove. Nice. And we land here. So a little bit about the place and discover activities. Then you get to here. And then from here, you could go whale watching or camping or camping again. And we'll watch again. Yeah. <laughs> so ideally, they're before they're before illustrations, but for yeah. uh, for our limited time, um, yeah, we cut those down a little bit. But I think that's great. So yeah. this already is an app. In two days, you can see uh, 
how it's coming together. Uh, yeah. Voodoo Val says it's amazing. Thank you. Thanks for sticking with us. Justin Garcia has a question. How are you sharing files? Uh, and Voodoo Val does it. We're sharing it with Adobe libraries. Yeah, that right. makes it so easy. Um, so we're on different computers. Mm -hmm. I'm saving it to the Adobe library. and He's able to pick it up right away. So that's exactly. been really awesome. And also for, uh, let's say you're going to present it to, this to the client, you can always go to Share here and create a link. Share for review. And you could copy a link or create a new link. Yeah. So, um, yeah, what else can we can do here? Yeah, so Eric also mentions that with XD, two people can work on the same file. Do you ever do that when you're working on? I haven't experienced that yet, but definitely you can do that. Yeah, as long as you have the file in um, the Creative Cloud library, um, someone can always pick it up, create on it, save on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But two at a time, I don't know. Okay. I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. That'd be a good question. Um, yeah, I think one of the things that's been fun about watching this process is, you know, I'm working in Adobe Illustrator, he's working in XD, and it's great to see how seamlessly they really work together, um, that he's able to pull the vector files from the Illustrator to work with those. Yeah. Um, Let me just link this back. Set new location. Okay. Slide right. Yeah, and really says uh, she really likes that the screen shows that there's more of the images to slide, but it makes it really inviting. That's awesome, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the design on that's been really cool. Um, do you have so? Uh, are there any other? Is there any other Adobe software you usually work with other than XD? Uh, Photoshop and Illustrator. Yeah, those three. Uh, sometimes InDesign. Yeah, I love InDesign. Um, I use InDesign for uh, client presentations. Okay. And for mood boarding, things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually my 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 regulars are Illustrator and InDesign. I work with. Um, Illustrator to do illustration, and then mm -hmm. because I work on a lot of book projects, I do use InDesign for that, um, especially when I'm doing more complicated spreads and I want to really work with text. Um, yeah. um, InDesign is just great for that. You know, you can set up um, files really easily, and yeah. it's really easy to work on long projects that way. So cool. I'm just doing this again, copy and pasting. And if I wanted to paste it on all artboards at once, just do that. Yeah, we're getting some more feedback. Oh, thank you for yeah. joining us, Voodoo Bell and everybody else. It's been awesome. Yeah. yeah. This is coming together really well. All right. Let's do this again. Yeah, and while we're looking at this, if you have any last questions, we're wrapping up our time here, but we'd still love to hear from you guys. Um, if you have any thoughts about the collaboration you saw, if you have any last questions about process or just, you know, larger design questions. Sweet, that's coming together. I love the easing animation. Mm. It makes it really smooth. Want to pick a new destination? Just click here. Get back here. Oh, that's really sweet from Valentina. Someone focused on UX but interested in learning about illustration. Uh, she loved this stream. Yeah, I think, thank you so much. That's been really fun to see. Yeah, there's a question from Joe Dorgu. Uh, if I do presentations with XD, a lot of times, yes. So uh, a lot of times before I do the animation, for presentation, I also do another screen for intro, and that's where I can talk about what the app is about before just jumping into the design. But yeah, XD is uh, handy for presentations as well. Awesome. Yeah. I do see we have our uh, the links to our Behance portfolios up there for oh, Voodoo. Thank you, Voodoo. So you can follow me on Behance.net slash Alexander Vidal, and you can follow Colt on Behance.net slash Colt Solano. Definitely check us out and follow us. We'd love to see what you guys are working on. Um, and we did have a question about um, when the next streams are. And Voodoo Bell does say we have more streams coming up tomorrow. So definitely check out the schedule. Um, if you want to go to behance.net slash live, you can always see uh, today's program. You can see what we've already watched. Or you can check in tomorrow to see the live stream tomorrow morning, definitely. According to Saddam, Taj, <laughs> location's not that attractive. The location <laughs> icon. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna polish this more, uh, this more and yeah. then we're gonna post it in Behance. Yeah, it's a good um, idea. But yeah, we're gonna get back to it. And yeah, make it prettier. Thanks so much, Nikhil. Saying the collab was really awesome. It was good. Got to know a lot of different things. Definitely. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we've been so much great feedback. We've really enjoyed all of that. Yeah, I enjoyed this too. Yeah, it's a fun process. Yeah, uh, it was nice actually doing some collaboration right on the spot. Yeah, um, get our helmet going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a patch right here. I wonder if it's that's for from Sticker Mule. Yeah, 
Super excited. You know, um, the winners of the Sticker Meal stickers, you should definitely post your stickers on Behance. I'd love to see those at some point, what you guys come up with. Yeah. Um, cool. Thank you, guys. Well, uh, thanks, thanks Joe. for sticking too. All right, so well, I guess it is time to say goodbye, but it has been so much fun working with you guys. Thanks for all the feedback. You guys really made this live stream so much fun. Um, you guys really contributed to the process too, so it's definitely more than a two-person collaboration. It's been a pretty, uh, pretty awesome, epic collaboration. It's been so much fun. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. Thank and you. Thanks for joining us. All right.